Uh, okay, hi guys. So I'm gonna start the class now. Can you guys open your cameras first? Uh, can you guys uh type in the chat or say hello? Cause uh, can can you guys hear me? <laughs> Hi. Hello. Oh, okay. So I'll start the class today. Uh, guys, can you see my screen? Uh, okay. So, uh, I'll be talking today on an art period called, um, which was called medieval art, which was, which took place mainly in the Middle Ages and uh, was it's also called the Dark Ages or the Medieval Ages. Um, this time was generally from around the um, the years 400, 1400 AD. Okay, so uh, to start off this class, I might do some recap on last class. So um, what do you guys remember? Um, all right, uh, if nobody knows, I'll call on someone. Uh, Kai, what do you remember? Sculptures. Yeah, um, yeah, that's correct. Good job. So, yeah, so last class I did talk about a bit about sculptures. Uh, it was important to the Greek civilization and it plays really heavily in the role of art. And Camille, what do you uh, what do you remember from last class? The Roman Empire? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah, so last class I did talk about two empires, so the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire, which all happened in the ancient world. Um, they were mainly known for their artworks and their sculptures, as they always had the realism in them, as you can see in this image here. It was rather realistic, and they were able to have a realistic look to it. Uh, so in this image here we see, uh, we can see uh, a person who most likely was an emperor. He was uh, due to his status because we can see he's holding uh, an angel on his um, leg. Uh, this may represent an emperor as uh, we know that uh, emperors were actually said to be chosen from God and the angel might be a representative to show that he's quite important and he might be the emperor of Rome. And also last class, I was talking a bit about the ancient Greeks. Uh, they were also a civilization in Europe. Does anyone remember the ancient Greeks? Uh, uh, okay, so Camille, do you remember about what I talked about a bit in, about the ancient Greeks? It's fine if you don't remember. Sculptures. Uh, yeah. So both were mainly involved a lot of sculptures and really basing off like making it realistic, using maths, geometry to make it 
using marble to make um, sculptures. And also another thing I sort of talked about was um, I did talk about sort of buildings and architecture, which is basically how a building is built. Um, the Romans did have a lot of ways to build a building. Uh, as you can see behind the sculpture, we see an archway. And basically, um, the Romans really did make the archway really important and sort of made it, uh, sort of spread it, sp spread it around the civilization. We can see arches still being used as bridges. Yeah. So this class, I'll be moving on now. This class, I would be talking about medieval art. So medieval, the medieval era started when the Roman Empire, which I talked about last class, sort of ended, sort of where it kind of got destroyed. Um, it was no longer one nation, and instead turned to, it turned into a lot. And we can see on the right, at the left here, this is a Roman, a uh, Roman painting, and on the right here is a Christian painting, uh, a medieval painting. Can you guys see the differences? Uh, Kai, what do you see? Is sort of like the different, sort of like the differences here. What do you notice? What is the same and what is different? What's the difference? This is this is angels. This is a Catholic god or something. See? One's more Catholic. Yeah, that's true. Uh so okay, I'll be touching on to sort of that later. Uh the right is actually a really religious artwork. Um it is uh, a Christian artwork to be specific, as you can see holding the Bible. Um, you see the book that is the Bible, which plays a really big part in. And we can see the crosses showing signs of religion, Christianity, and sort of showing, uh, yeah, Jesus. Okay. Uh, uh, Camille, what, what do you... Uh, what do you say? Uh, what do you see that is sort of like different or like the same, in your opinion? Mm, the same is that they both have people. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, that's correct. So both capture people inside these artworks. Uh, hold on, sorry. Uh, both capture artworks on the right is, as we can see, uh, is two people, and so is on the left. But in my opinion, from the differences I see, is I believe that the Roman painting is more detailed compared to the right. Um, we can sort of see this through shade. Um, so shade is basically how you are able to see um, it's sort of a way to paint or a paint to paint a cup to paint a shape. Um, it's sort of it's sort of a way to bring like it's sort of way to bring realism into what you're painting. Uh, on the left, we we're able to see that some skin is like darker and some skin are lighter. This is sort of to capture that realism to make sure it kind of looks real. Well, on the right, they are sort of, there is not made. And the right, I would say, is a bit more, less detailed. It's, um, and another difference I saw was that on the left, uh, it is more of an action. It's capturing an action of two people, perhaps dancing. And uh, as we can see by um, by the movement, we could sort of guess what they're trying to do. While on the right, uh, we sort of see a more standing, uh, 
a photo that's more of two people standing and not really change doing much. Yeah, so um, moving on, moving on. So the question comes, why did it sort of change? Why did it turn bad? Okay, so medieval Europe sort of lost their interest towards art and sort of literature and sort of religion was a really big part of this difference. Uh, religion sort of restricted them on how they could paint and how they could create art. Uh, they didn't really believe in realism, which is sometimes known as the Dark Ages. So the Middle, e the Middle Ages or the Medieval Ages were also sometimes referred to as the Dark Ages. As we can see here, this is also um, this is also a sort of a decoration. I'm assuming from 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 a church or something, and we could see here that it is what well, a bit two D. Uh, so we could observe it for a little bit. So Angie. What do you see here? What what can you sort of like tell from? Uh, can you hear me, Angie? Um, it's fine if he don't really want to say anything. You could just type. Okay, then moving on. Uh, Camille, so what do you see in this sort of painting-ish here? This decoration? Um, it looks like, like they want to, like they have swords. Yeah, a great observation there, Camille. Uh, you could see on the, the left, we could see a people, perhaps peasants, as you can see what they're wearing is not the richest. Uh, they're holding swords, perhaps saying they're angry and you could see from the torches behind them so a bunch of fire perhaps saying they are angry at these certain people and it might tie into a bit of christianity as we can see on the right uh these people seem like they're more rich they have more money because we could see what they're wearing uh they're wearing uh silk or cloth which was rather a way to show they are rather wealthy and have a lot of money. Uh, you can also see one person is holding a, it's either a cross or it could also be a sword. And from what I'm assuming, I'm assuming that they are perhaps priests as you could see, they're quite wealthy, and mainly the wealthy people back then were priests. Yeah, so moving on. Uh, oh yeah, and also another thing I see in this painting is that it is actually made out of sort of like stone. Uh, you can see it's little squares that are put together using different colors. So like the style, you can see it's little stones that is placed around. This is perhaps to design something. Sort of, okay, going on. So I'll tell you a bit about the background during this time. So as we talked before, we talked a bit about the Roman Empire, which was a really big empire. And uh, it was rather really wealthy. As we can see in this in this map over here, we can see that it it, it took 
Rome was able to take from Spain to Britain, um, to to modern day the UK, to sort of modern day Egypt, to a bit of modern day Turkey. Uh, we are able to see that it is pretty big. But now, in the after the collapse, so after the Roman Empire sort of was failing due to a lot of money issues and due to different countries trying to attack them and a lot of people not being happy. Um, it sort of shattered into these different different countries as this is called medieval Europe. We're able to see that there are countries that we may know today, like Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Poland, Hungary, Serbia, and France, England, Scotland, Ireland, Portugal, just to name like a little. Uh, so we are able to see that the big Roman Empire sort of collapsed and turned into many different different small countries. Do you guys have any questions? Oh, okay, so assuming there is no questions. Um, okay, so the Holy Roman Empire. You might be able to see this really big one, the green one in the middle. Yeah, so I'll be sort of talking about this place later on. Okay, so as we saw, the Holy Roman Empire. Well, to bring some background, the Holy Roman Empire wasn't Roman. It wasn't holy, and it wasn't an empire. Um, and that was to quote a historian called Vlotaire. Um, it, was, it was not a country. It was not an empire. It was not Roman. Uh, from the uh, from the map to the right, we are able to see that the Holy Roman Empire is a, just a bunch of small countries together. And in this in these small countries, they were not happy that they were part of this empire. It is sort of to say if America was to say, "Oh, um, I'm America, and Mexico and Canada is now mine." Technically, they are not his, um, is not America. Canada, Mexico are different countries. But because America was so strong, they were like, yeah, all of this area of North America, all of Mexico, all of Canada is my territory, and I could do whatever I want in that territory. A lot of people in Canada and Mexico are going to be upset. And sort of like this, the Holy Roman Empire was a bunch of small city, uh, small countries. And basically, it was not one empire. It was a bunch of small countries. And it sort of added to the chaos of medieval Europe. Does anyone have any questions? All right, so if there's none, I'll be moving on. So I'll be touching back onto religion. So as we saw before, the Roman Empire was really big, sort of stretching from England to all the way to like Egypt to all the way to Turkey, which is considering really big. It is bigger than modern day Russia. And it was really wealthy too. Um, the Roman Empire, the later Roman Empire, was actually actually believed in a different religion called Christianity. So, what is religion? Sort of religion is sort of a group of people who believe to worship people or superhumans that are controlling the world, controlling the power, especially, be, uh, especially a person God or gods. In this image to the right, we are able to see it's a church and I believe it's a Christian church as we can see. There is a, um, a cross 
which might signify it is Christian. And we are able to see from here that uh, that it's a, a Catholic, a sort of Christian styled building. Um, sort of Christianity really played into into sort of medieval Europe as uh, as it, it was the only thing that Europe had in common. Everyone was fighting over land, over over money, but religion, so Christianity, was the only thing that everyone agreed on. Okay, so why was Christianity important? Sort of Christianity believed in Jesus and sort of believed in God. They, and sort of ways to, it was sort of a way to do stuff. Uh, they believed in holy lands, holy places, churches, and more. Um, and sort of sometimes, and sort of sometimes, um, and sort of sometimes people have to sustain and sort of take a place that might be important, say the holy lands. And they might have a lot of battles and fights due to a lot of disagreements. And an example of this might be the Crusades. Um, so what was the Crusades? So there was an empire who believed in this different religion called Muslim. And sort of they, they had the Holy Lands, which was also a really important place for Christians, but it was also an important place for the Muslims. And a bunch of Christians from every every Europe empire, uh, every Europe country, from England, from the Holy Roman Empire, from Scotland, from France, from, from Spain, they sort of went together and sort of had to fight and they wanted to take the Holy Lands. And it ended up resulting in a lot of deaths, a lot of battles. Uh, we can see this de de depicted on this image to the left. Uh, we can see that on the left is knights, perhaps sort of signifying their Europeans as knights were quite popular. And on the right, we have the Muslims. Any questions? Okay, so going to the art place in history. Um, Christianity also had these bunch of rules that people had to follow. And sort of Christianity sort of limited how art could be make, made. They didn't allow a lot in 3D sculptures. So they thought the Romans were and the Greeks were bad because of their sculptures. They, they inside, they believed in 2D. So basically drawings, paintings, but these drawings and paintings had to be already approved. So the government or a priest or an emperor has to look at that painting and say that it was okay to be drawn. drawn. And that was sort of a limiting factor to um, these paintings because a lot are not able to be drawn. So a lot of these drawings were actually copies of drawings. Any questions? It's okay to speak out. Okay, so then I'll be sort of moving on. So relations and tensions, sort of meaning how did one, sorry, how did one how did one country sort of fare and view another country? So the situation was actually kind of horrible and had a lot of chaos. Um, there was a lot of wars, such as the Hundred Years' War, 
this um and more of basically European countries fighting over others, mainly for land and sort of for some more for stupid reasons. There was actually a war that happened about some French person who stole a bucket from the England, which resulted in a war. So there was a bunch of places like England, Norway, which were the Vikings, and France that were constantly at war. <clears throat> we're able to see that from the from the painting from the left. Um, on the right, we are able to see it is actually the the English as they have the England flag of Saint George. And on the left, we have presumably the French or the Normans, which are basically Vikings who lived in France. Uh, we could tell this through their flag, which looks red and blue, which may signify uh, France or Norway. And sort of this was a battle that happened. Yeah, so moving on. So moving on from your moving on from Christianity, moving on from religion, we have sort of a different place that sort of strived and sort of became really wealthy. They believed in literature. Does anyone know what these two places are on the maps? Okay, then. Uh, Kai, do you, do you recognize these maps? Do you know where the, this might be? That is China. China? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah, on the right, it is China. But back then, it was not China. It was actually called the Tang Dynasty. Uh, this is because they used a different government system. So where, where the uh, monkey king is, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So there's a lot of stories and sort of Buddhism happened in Tang Dynasty. I'll move on. I'll talk about it a bit later. And on the left, it, it's sort of east. Uh, it's called the Islamic Golden Age. Has anyone heard of it? Uh, okay, then. So the Islamic Golden Age were uh, really, they were Muslims and they were sort of a really big empire. As we can see, the Islamic Golden Age comes from India to Turkey to um, sort of Saudi Arabia, Yemen, to sort of modern day Egypt and to even to Spain, which was in Europe. And I find it a bit cool that Islamic Golden Age was able to reach Spain because Spain was a sea across and it will be really hard to invade a place that was not close to your country. For example, it would be really hard for say China to invade the United States because it's really far away. Not only is it far away, but also because the military is really strong too. And yeah, and on the right, we have the Tang Dynasty, I said before. And sort of these two places were really wealthy during the time that Europe was really bad. Um, they, may, they had a lot of money. They, they also didn't really have the same standards and beliefs as Europe. I sort of said before, you, Christianity didn't allow painter, uh, didn't allow sculptures, but instead only more 2D stuff, more paintings. But sort of the Tang Dynasty and the Islamic Golden Age sort of didn't have these rules. They believed they actually 
actually wanted people to be mathematicians. They gave the money they gave people to become scholars. Okay, so the Islamic golden age. So like I said before, it was sort of an empire that were, ha, um, were Muslims. They, it was considered really culture economically and scientifically beneficial in the history of Islam. Um, they were quite wealthy through trade and they were able to use money to build cultures and buildings like the Roman Empire. Sort of another thing that was quite interesting about the Islamic Golden Age, they saw the Romans as kind of people who were smart and saw the Greeks as people who they wanted to follow. As I said before, we could see here in this in this um, church, uh, we can see that it is a dome and sort of on the bottom is archways. Uh, we are able to see that it is sort of followed from the Roman Empire because before, like I said, the Roman Empire were the ones who sort of invented this type of build. Um, yeah, the Islamic Golden Age were able to store, they were able to get Roman books, Roman ideas, Roman, Roman writing, and they were sort of able to use it and build their own empire off it. So maths in the empire. Okay, so the empire believed in encouraging scholars. Scholars were people who were the smart ones, who are the Albert Einsteins, who are the Bill, um, who are the Bill Gates, who are trying something new. People who find out about stuff. They believed in maths. They believed in science. They believed in astronomy, and that's also why that a lot of a lot of things you use to this day were created in the Islamic Golden Age. This may be like a compass. This also may be steam engine. This may be, they actually discovered how to make clean wa dirty water clean through a process called distillation, where they get dirty water and they boil it to create clean water. They sort of were able to make it completely clean, able to use, and sort of they flourished. They were able, they were able to store, translate ancient Greek and Roman writings. And sort of another important factor on why the Islamic Golden Age were really good at art was because things like geometry, they were they wanted to experiment with geometry and patterns like this, uh, using squares and triangles to create these different patterns. But unlike the Greeks, they were able to add color to them, which sort of brought more life, sort of were able to make their style so unique. Um, yeah, so what do you guys see here? So, so Camille, what do you, what do you see on the left here? Um, like, a design, like, with lots of patterns. Uh, yeah, that's correct, Camille. So, yeah, this is a pattern, and we could see it's rectangles made to squares, to circles, and more. We're able to see different patterns, which means that they are repeating symbols that continue on. Um, they used it for roofs, carpets, and more to design stuff. Um, there's also a story about how Every time you create an, an Islamic Golden Age inspired sort of pattern, every one of them will be completely new because every one of them has their own style, their own way of creating stuff. 
And if I was to right now create something like this, it would be completely new. And it is highly unlikely that someone before me built the same thing. Uh, so we can also see this in this church here. Um, it is filled with these repeating patterns and use, using geometry like rectangles, circles, and more. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, sort of seeing that there is none, I'll be moving on. So architecture. So architecture is sort of the way you build stuff. As I said before, the Islamic Golden Age was able to copy off the Roman Empire. Um, this might be an example here. This is a mosque. Uh, sort of, it was, it was also to worship the Islamic Golden Age's God, which, um, which personally I don't know much about. But as you can see here in this mosque, you can see that it is uh, a dome and a lot of archways, which were mainly created by the Romans. Yeah, okay, so moving on. The Tang Dynasty, like we said before, uh, it's in modern day China. So it is one of the most wealthiest places back in the medieval era. And it was, it, and through trade like silk and tea, they were able to be really rich. So you might ask why was the Tang Dynasty so, so powerful, so easy to get all this money? Well, it's sort of because, as you can see, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor countries like Tibet, Nanjiao, Turk, Kor, Gori, and Sila weren't really as strong as China. And they either didn't want to fight China or they're too small to really fight China because China really had a big military. Um, these ne ne nearby countries didn't want to fight uh, China. And that's why they were able to use so much money into, into literature, art, and more. Okay, so the system and the culture. So because nobody really fought the, uh, the Tang Dynasty, they were able to use the money for innovations for people who are smart. They were able to make paper money, gunpowder, silk, and more. And using the silk and the gunpowder and the tea leaves, they were able to trade it away for more money towards say, the Islamic golden age or to even to Europe. Uh, through foreign trade, art, religious life, and being able to live rich was sort of why the Tang Dynasty was so famous. Does anyone have any? Uh, okay, then moving on. So Buddhism, like the Islamic Golden Age and sort of Europe, uh, the Tang Dynasty also had their religion that they believed in, which was Buddhism, Buddhism. And it was unlike Christianity as Christianity believed only in one God. And so, and also the Muslims, I think. Buddhism believed in many gods and different gods do different things. The God of wisdom and more sort of why was it so, why was, why was Buddhism so, why was the Tang Dynasty so, uh, so popular? Well, it was mainly from Buddhism. As, as we know, religion spreads a lot through trade. And through trade, countries know 
where a religion was made, where was it created, and how it's important. And sort of through Buddhism, the Tang Dynasty sort of the reputation sort of everyone sort of knew them all over the world, knew that there was some foreign land that was super rich and had a lot of money. So, okay, looking on the left, what do you guys observe here? What do you think? A lady? Yeah, uh, on the left, we see a lady from the Tang Dynasty. Um, from what I'm able to tell, I can tell that she's wearing silk perhaps showing that she is quite rich and sort of I believe that the hat might tie into Buddhism well it could be my opinion through the style through the gold representing if she is rich or not we could also see the style um she is really pale white using perhaps flower to cover the face and another thing that I found kind of interesting was this was the um the, sh the shirt well I found the dress sort of quite interesting how much color there was it was they were able to create clothes with patterns clothes with different styles and if you think about it, all clothes were really man-made and were made from hand. There was no machine that could make and sort of make these different colors and make these different patterns, which made it so interesting. Another thing is we can see that the color of her flowers is purple and sort of purple was a way to say that they were really rich. From my understanding, purple was a really rich color because purple is really hard to find. The, the only purple that can be made is from red and blue. But if you were to put that on silk, it will look not good. This is why purple can be only found in really rare mines where they're able to steal the color from the soil. Yeah, does anyone have any questions? Uh, so seeing that there is none, I'll move on. So the art style and the art in the Tang Dynasty, sort of they were the first place to use paper for paintings, poems and more. There could be stories that could be found on paper. And sort of art comes from many forms in the Tang Dynasty, from paintings to sculptures to calligraphy, music, dance, literature. And sort of as we can see here. Um, so Camille, what do you see on the right here? A horse. Yeah, and what do you think is sort of Sort of, sort of all about it and sort of different. Like sort of what do you see is sort of different about the regular sculptures? is on a platform but what I find sort of interesting about the sculpture is that the horse is made of wood and the horse and the back of the horse I, I believe is stone and sort of the way and the style was different movements so the Greeks sort of a whitish stone color, but um, but the horse used this horse here 
was sort of stone and wood and sort of the wood also looks really different it is it was glazed meaning it was it was made really shiny and yeah and so kai what do you notice in this map over or this strong here many mountains and trees yeah and that's correct kai so this was sort of um this was sort of a style that the Tang dynasty used that is common like we are able we are able to see that um this mountains and the clouds were actually it 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 sort of shows the terrain that they were in um it's really common to find these style in the Tang dynasty uh on the bottom we are able to see peasants um so basically workers farmers who are on horse perhaps going up a mountain yeah and this was also kind of fascinating as it happens on paper uh, and another thing about the Tang dynasty is that they use stamps which was sort of like printing but instead of um instead of using like a machine to paint print they had these um wooden blocks where they would put a message or put a carving a word or something and they'll dip it in color mostly ink and then they'll stamp it on sort of we're able to see this in this um in the top left corner of this painting uh, can you guys see my mouse? Okay, so yeah, so the red here. Um, yeah, that sort of is a stamp where perhaps someone was to to get a wooden block, they put a message and they stamped it onto a painting. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, then, um, sort of moving on. So what was the political system like? Well, the, the place was a really well-governed empire that sort of, that was able to sustain its culture. It was able, it was able to get really rich off a lot of these innovations, these things that they invented, um, that made them really rich. Does anyone have any questions? Oh yeah, and also on the right, um, we are able to see these different temples. And I'll sort of touch on to that later. Does anyone have any questions? Okay then. So clothing was another thing that was sort of important. So clothing what time it's from, how wealthy someone is, and sort of where it was from. A lot of historians, people who research this stuff, were able to see the clothing and sort of rather well-dressed, and the clothing was modeled after Su. And in the middle of the Tang Dynasty, when the Tang Dynasty allowed a lot of these foreigners uh, like from India, from the Islamic Golden Age, to come to the Tang Dynasty, it was influenced a lot. Uh, it was their clothing was really influenced. And on the right, this is the late Tang Dynasty, where clothing became more loose, as you can see here. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, then moving on, we have the temple. So temples were also sort of a place, a religious place that sort of was a church or mosque. This was mainly for Buddhism. And, and sort of, they made the style really different um, from the other, the other parts. 
uh, from the Islamic Golden Age and the Christian churches. They were mainly domes with archways, but sort of the style and temples of this Tang dynasty. Uh, it was more square with stone bricks for its roof. And sort of Buddhism and religion sort of played a heavy, heavy style into this sort of temple. And yeah. So moving on, this is also a temple. So uh, Camille, what do you notice about this temple? Um, it, Kai. Sure. Uh, Kai, what do you notice? It has curved roofs. Yeah, that's correct. So it's really common if you were guys to go to say Beijing or Nanking, and then yeah, where you would find these sort of sort of all over China right now, but you'd find these sort of a uh, Buddhist temples, which were squares and they were really tall, and they had their own way of their own style of building. Uh, we can see the roofs were stone, stone jaggers, sort of like a wave. And sort of they had balconies where people can come out. Temples may be lived in for Buddhism, but it could also be lived in for, say, an emperor. A uh, rich person would also live someplace like this. Yeah, sort of go, moving on. So I'm going to be talking about more than more about Europe. So people may argue that Europe didn't decline, it didn't become bad, it just became, it just improved slower compared to the Romans and the Greeks. Sort of an example of this might be the Byzantine Empire. So Camille, what do you notice about this painting on the right? It's like a person that has like writing on the side. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I believe this is actually a painting uh, from the Byzantine. This is a painting or painting from the Byzantine Empire. Uh, from my understanding, it could perhaps be from uh, Jesus because he's holding a Bible with a Christ, uh, with a Christ behind his head. We are also able to see that it is broken, as we can see from the pink. I believe this is actually sort of like saying this this painting was broken. This it could be from I don't know from a fall. Any questions? Okay, sort of moving on to the Byzantine Empire. Sort of after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, as I said before, there's a man called Constantine the First. He decided to sort of move the Roman Empire to Constantinople, calling themselves the New Romans. But they still referred to themselves as Romans, still lived their life. They still believed they were Romans. They carried on their culture, but they weren't the same without Rome. That's why it was later called the Byzantine Empire due to its location. Okay, sort of the status and the relations. So for much of the time, the Byzantine carried on the Roman culture. They were still really rich and a bit wealthy. They carried out the Roman style of living and sort of still referred to themselves as Rome. As you can see on this map, this is actually a uh, a map of Rome, Rome, but after the red became different countries and sort of destroyed itself, the purple remained its own empire called called the Eastern Roman Empire, but was later called the Roman Empire, uh, the Byzantine Empire. Sorry. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing that there's none, I'll be moving on. So what is different about the Roman Empire and sort of the Byzantine Empire? So there's only a couple of differences that separated the Roman Empire 
from the Byzantine Empire. Firstly, they sort of changed their official language from Latin to Greek. But more importantly, they changed their official religion to Christianity. Like said before, the Romans believed in this religion that had Neptune, had Jupiter, have, having many gods. But they changed their religion to Christianity. It's the same to every place in Europe. You can see this is a church in Constantinople, I think. Yeah, it's a Catholic church with the, the Christ symbol. Okay, so moving on. Was the Dark Ages really dark? This is a question that's brought up many times. Uh, there's always a de debate with many people whether it's dark or not. Hold on, sorry. Uh, but it is arguably... It's arguably that it is not dark because these paintings, these era, this quality of life remained the same. People were still farmers. And sometimes even people were more rich. This is why Europe was not really dark in my opinion. But whether it's dark or not, it's always up to your opinion. Yeah, okay, so. How does Asia and the Middle East compare? So, uh, Camille, what do you notice about the sculpture on the left and sort of the right? The one on the right is like, like a person. And like the one on the left is like more of a building. Uh, yeah, that's correct. So the left is actually a a uh, a sculpture of um of the Qing, uh, the Tang Dynasty, sort of uh it could play it's sort of a sculpture made out of clay, and sort of clay was also something that the uh, Tang Dynasty sort of created and sort of used as sculptures, and on the right is a um is a is is uh, a sort of a design for a wall. We are able to see it's using a dome. And in my opinion, I think this is actually really well done. Okay, so here's the comparisons to Europe. Uh, as you can see here, it's less detailed and perhaps made not as well. They were mainly 2Ds. Yeah, so what do you notice about this, Kai? About these two sort of Europe comparisons? They're all a bit more scary. Oh yeah, because I would, well, it could be the ones I picked, but a lot of sort of medieval Europe art revolved a lot on warfare and sort of a lot about Christianity. The one on the right, the one with the skeleton and the lady, I'm assuming it's about the afterlife, about when people die and on the is actually about a war. But in my opinion, I think the style is very different. Um, they're not very realistic and yeah. Okay, so uh, do you guys want to see a video right now? Because I might be over time. Uh, yes or no? Do you want? Do you guys want to see a video? Sure. Okay, it's five minutes long, so give me a second. Can you see it? Oh, hi, Arturo Pittore here, but you can call me Art. This is Explorations in Art History, starring me. <laughs> and the hand. What about the rest of me? 
embarrassing. Man, people watch it from around the world. Man, I'm stuck waiting on some five finger prima donna. Oh, oh, well, that's better, right? See? Uh, <clears throat> it looks like we'll be talking about the medieval and Byzantine periods. It had taken many lifetimes and countless battles to conquer and maintain the vast regions of the Roman Empire. When Emperor Theodosius I took power, he ruled over lands that stretched from Portugal to Palestine. The question of succession of power had always been a thorny problem in the empire, and for Theodosius, it came down to a choice between two sons. Or did it? In 395 AD, Theodosius instead split the empire in half. The western half became the domain of his son, Honorius. We call it the Western Roman Empire. The eastern half was awarded to his son, Arcadius, and became known as the Byzantine Empire. The two kingdoms both considered themselves Roman, though they spoke Latin in the west and Greek in the east. Honorius and the Western Roman Empire were besieged by barbarian hordes from the beginning. Huns, Goths, Vandals, and Franks all took turns invading Western territories. Sacking Rome became a barbarian pastime, and the Vandals, thanks to their exceptional knack for destruction and violence, gave us the word vandalism. Ow! I hate when that happens! It was a rough and tumble time. Only 81 years after the death of Theodosius, the Western Roman Empire ceased to exist. With the empire splintered into separate countries, the one unifying force to remain was the Catholic Church and the Pope. The Byzantine Empire, on the other hand, would last another thousand years. In 730 AD, Emperor Leo III initiated a movement called Iconoclasm, based on a strict interpretation of the Ten Commandments, which forbade the making and worshiping of graven images and, perhaps due to the rising influence of Islamic culture, the iconoclasts sought the removal or destruction of paintings and sculptures. There's one. This way, man! Uh, look at it! Get it! Gutted that one! There's one. There's another one! Go and get it! Ah! We're too late! There's one. There's another one! Oh, stop him! Stop him now! Hurry! Caught him in the act! Ah! Take the scoundrel away! After iconoclasm ended, Byzantine artists were limited to copying approved images from the past. I'm a copy of 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 a copy. Back in Rome, Pope Gregory II rejected iconoclasm and denounced it as heretical. He even sent a letter excommunicating the iconoclasts. It's Byzantine blasphemy. Excommunicate them! As a result, artists in the West had more creative freedom. The church was the major patron of the arts, and so most medieval art had religious themes. Western artists of the later Middle Ages were interested in creating visionary experiences. Over time, in the search to create more convincing and powerful images, their art became more realistic in its portrayal of people and the natural world. I have dimension. This is Art saying thanks for sharing another fascinating exploration into... Uh, hey, I'm, I'm not done talking. What? Hey, I'm not finished. All right, guys. So that sort of marks the end of this class. Uh, hold on. Uh, so thank you. You guys can leave whenever. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.